everyone and welcome back to Black Beanie Gaming. My name is Murphy, here again with another Minecraft skyscraper tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to build Willis Tower, or Sears Tower if you're a Chicagoan, step by step with the new entryway and lobby. Before we get going, this video wouldn't be possible without the support of this awesome community, so please feel free to join in on the fun over at the Black Beanie Gaming Discord server, the subreddit, or to follow the channel on Instagram and Twitter. Links for each are in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate notifications so you can be alerted the second a new video goes live. Now back to business. We're going to try and go through this as quickly as possible, so here's what you'll need to know. No mods, no programs like World Edit or World Painter or texture packs are required to build this. This can be built on any platform, PC, consoles, or mobile, in vanilla Java or Bedrock. All you need is a copy of the game and a bit of free time. This build is going to be 226 blocks tall. As such, we're going to need to build this in a flat world, or at least until Mojang ups the height limit. If you're building this in a city, you'll need an empty area of at least 44 by 50 spaces. We're focusing a bit more on realism than in previous tutorials, so our parts list is a little bit longer than normal. So here's what you'll need to get it done. Smooth stone blocks, smooth stone slabs, fizzled quartz blocks, smooth quartz blocks, smooth quartz slabs, smooth quartz stairs, black concrete, gray concrete, light gray concrete, polished black stone brick slabs, polished black stone brick stairs, blocks of coal, polished andesite slabs, black stained glass panes, light gray stained glass panes, light gray stained glass blocks, green carpet, heavy weighted pressure plates, and stone bricks, and stone brick wall pieces, and stone brick stairs, birch fence pieces, beacons, skull torches, redstone torches, end rods, grindstones, scaffolding, powered rails, and anvils. Before we get started, I do not have instructions on how to illuminate the interior of the building. Normally, I would use torches, but you can use end rods, lanterns, soul torches, glowstone, fire, lava, whatever the heck you want. I'll leave it up to you. I do have instructions for traversable floors through staircases. You can ignore those instructions and build an elevator, use water, ladders, whatever the heck you want, but I prefer the realism of traversable floors with staircases. All right, with that out of the way, grab a snack, get yourself a tasty beverage, and get comfortable, because here we go. All right, to start, you need to know the four streets around Willis Tower. We won't be making the streets, but that's how we'll identify the four sides of the building. The rear is Jackson, the left is Wacker, the right is Franklin, and the front is Adams. Once you have your empty plot of land and have figured out which direction you want your tower to be facing, go ahead and cut out a 44 space long line from left to right. This is the Jackson side. Continue forward by 49 spaces. This is Franklin then left by another 43 spaces for Adams, and back down by another 48 spaces for Wacker. Go ahead and clear out the top layer inside of this outline, like this. Take your smooth stone blocks and add two rows on the inside of Jackson like this. Two rows up Franklin, like so, another two across the inside of Adams, then four rows back down Wacker. Head back to the corner of Jackson and Franklin and add another row, 40 bricks long, headed forward, stopping six blocks short of Adams, like this. Grab your chiseled quartz blocks, and from the corner of Wacker and Jackson, place 15 chiseled quartz bricks to the right, along the inside of the stone blocks. Place two more moving forward, then 10 more moving right, two more moving back, then 12 more to the right into the next corner. Place 24 more chiseled blocks moving forward, Place three more moving left, then eight moving forward, and three to the right. Now place eight more headed forward, one to the right, then five more into the corner of Franklin and Adams. Moving left, place eight more bricks, then five more moving backwards. Moving left again, place 20 more, then five more bricks moving forward. Place nine more moving left into the corner of Adams and Wacker. Place 13 more chiseled bricks moving back along Wacker, Place two more moving right, then eight more backward, two more to the left, then 23 backward into the corner of Wacker and Jackson. Like this. Take your smooth stone bricks and fill in the four gaps we made. Here, 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 and here. On the inner right corner of the Jackson gap, place seven more chiseled blocks to the right. Like this. Then place 38 more moving forward. Then one more to the left to connect it to the corner of the Adams gap. Head to the left corner of the Adams gap, Place two more chiseled bricks to the left, 
then 38 more moving back. Place 6 more to the right to connect it with the other corner of the Jackson Gap. It'll look like this. Head to the Jackson Franklin corner of this inner chiseled quartz line and count up by 14 spaces. Place 7 more chiseled bricks moving left. Equip your black concrete blocks and place 9 blocks to the left. Re-equip your chiseled quartz and place 7 more to the left to connect it with the line on the other side, like so. Remove all the dirt on the inside of this smaller outline, including underneath the chiseled quartz and black concrete, all the way through the bedrock. Beneath the left and rightmost black concrete blocks, place three more vertically, like so. Equip your smooth quartz blocks and place two full rows beneath the chiseled bricks, then one final row of chiseled quartz below that. Clear all the dirt and bedrock between the black concrete line and the chiseled brick line of the Adams Gap. You'll have a big empty gap, nine bricks wide. Now clear out another line on each side to make the gap 11 bricks wide. Then clear out the dirt and bedrock below the chiseled bricks of the Adams Gap. Against the exposed bedrock, place chiseled quartz bricks, then place two rows of smooth quartz on top of that, like this. Equip your black concrete and count forward from the two concrete columns by eight spaces. Make two more columns right against the quartz, four bricks tall. Count ahead eight more spaces and do so again. Then add lines of upended smooth quartz stairs between the top bricks of these four columns, facing inward, like so. Now fill in the floor with smooth quartz slabs, placing them against the lower half of the chiseled quartz, like this. Keep your slabs equipped and face the inside edge of the Jackson Gap. All the way across the Jackson line, place three rows of slabs across the top half of the bricks. Then four rows on the inside of the left and right sides, like so. In the lower right corner of the quartz, add four rows of three like this. In the lower left corner, add one row of three, adding two more slabs moving forward from the innermost brick, like this. In this little area, use smooth quartz stairs, starting by placing two upended stair pieces side by side, punching out necessary spaces like this, and alternating the pieces until you reach the floor. On the top half of the exposed chiseled quartz to the left of the black concrete, add four rows of three slabs moving back. On the chiseled quartz to the right of the black concrete line, mirror the process to make another staircase facing backward, like this. Take your black concrete blocks and add a piece on top of the left and right blocks on the concrete line, here and here, then one in the dead center, with three empty spaces between it and the others. Equip your black stained glass panes and wrap some glass around the opening in the floor, starting on the outside edges of the new black concrete pieces and going around your stairs. Add another black concrete block on top of the other concrete columns to make them five blocks tall. Count eight spaces ahead of the top of the forwardmost blocks and place two more blocks on the Adams Gap line. Then count eight spaces to the right and left of the four center columns and place two more blocks on the chiseled quartz lines. Then place a block on each of the four corners of this inner square. Across the tops of the upended stair pieces in the middle, place black glass panes between the concrete blocks, like so. Equip your chiseled bricks. On the back of the middle brick on the Adams Gap line, make a line of chiseled bricks backward until you reach the upended stairs. Do the same from the Wacker and Franklin gaps. Then make a line of bricks from the back of the rear line of stair pieces until you meet the black concrete, like this. In each of the quadrants of this inner square, wrap a row of smooth quartz around the chiseled quartz and stair pieces, like this. Then make a 3x3 three three chiseled square in each corner, with a smooth quartz block in the center of each. Like this. Head to the square in the lower left quadrant, wrap a row of smooth quartz around it, continue that row to the center, then toward the upended stairs. Move in by one space and place a line of chiseled bricks back and then toward the square to make a 4x4 four four L shape, like this. Make another L shape of smooth quartz going back the other way. Place three chisel bricks diagonally in these new empty spaces, like this, then fill in the remaining four spaces with smooth quartz. You're going to create a mirror image of this pattern moving counterclockwise, so go to the lower right quadrant and do this, and the upper right quadrant and do this. Finally, the upper left quadrant, like this. Cover all the exposed dirt and grass on the right side of the interior with smooth quartz blocks. 
On the left side, on the spaces just outside the Wacker Gap, make a line of chiseled quartz from the outer line to the inner line, like so. Then fill in the remaining empty space with smooth quartz blocks. Here's the end result. Okay, it's time to build up the base. Add three black concrete blocks to all the existing concrete blocks. Head to the three black concrete columns in the rear. Four spaces outward from the right and left of these make another four brick tall column, like this. Connect the tops of the outer columns with more concrete to make a long outer row. Head to the center chiseled block of the Adams Gap up front. Make a three space wide, three brick tall window of black glass panes. Skip the next space and place glass panes up the inside of the concrete. Then place one more above you in the empty spaces. Now fill in the rest of the space along the front of the concrete square with black glass panes, like this. Now two spaces backward from the inside of the middle glass panes and make a four brick tall black concrete column. Count eight spaces to the right and make another. Back and right diagonally by two spaces and make another. Backward by eight spaces and make another. Then again. Mirror that on the left side of the building. Fill in the space between the rear three columns with black glass panes. Leave the spaces just outside of them empty, but fill in the spaces outside of those, like this. Now equip your gray concrete blocks and head to the chiseled block on the corner of Wacker and Jackson. Make a four brick tall gray concrete column on the corner. Add three more blocks to the right of the top. Go down and move right by one space and make a seven brick long line of gray concrete across the chiseled quartz. Add five concrete blocks on top of the first, third, fifth, and seventh blocks, connecting the topmost blocks with another. Move right along the ground by four more spaces and make a four brick tall concrete column. Then add three more blocks to the left to connect it to the other column. Move inward by two spaces from the new column and make another four brick tall column, connecting the top to the last one. Immediately to the right of the last column, make another four brick tall column. Then add 13 more bricks in a row from the front of the top block, connecting it to the black concrete ahead of it. Add four more gray concrete blocks on top, move forward by two spaces and do so again. Then connect the tops of these two new columns, like so. Move right along the ground by eight spaces. Make a four brick tall gray column, add 13 more bricks from the top block, go back to the beginning, add four more bricks, move ahead by two spaces and make another four brick column, connecting the top with the previous one. Make a line of gray concrete between the top bricks of the tall outer columns. Head to the chiseled brick on the corner of Jackson and Franklin, and make another four brick tall gray column. Place 11 more in a row to the left of the top block, then make another column on the chiseled block immediately to the left. Move forward by two spaces, make another, and connect the tops, like this. From the front space of the column on the Jackson Franklin corner, build a row of 22 blocks from the top brick, then make a column in the space ahead of it. It should be one space short of the chiseled brick corner of the Franklin Gap. Now add four more blocks in a row from the left of the top brick of this new column. It'll meet the black concrete. Equip your smooth quartz blocks, place a block on the space ahead of the gray column, then four more to the left, connecting it to the black concrete. Add three more rows right on top to make a wall. Make another wall just like this on the other side of the Franklin Gap, like so. Against the black concrete between these two walls, build out two rows of smooth quartz blocks all the way across. Then three more rows using smooth quartz slabs. Take your black glass panes and place a row under the outer horizontal quartz block row. Place two panes vertically on either end, then two rows of three in the center to make your entryway, like this. In the space ahead of the wall, on the chiseled quartz line, make another gray concrete column. Add four more along the top of the smooth quartz to the left. Then add six more moving forward from the top of the column. Make another column in the space ahead of it, then another immediately to the right. Four more blocks ahead from the top, then another column on the corner. Seven more blocks to the left of the top block, then another column on the next corner of the chiseled line. Three more moving back from the top, then another column right against the black concrete wall and glass. Then two more columns immediately to the right to make a wall, like this. Move over to the chiseled line on the left of the Adams Gap, right up against the black concrete and glass, make another four block gray column. Immediately to the left, make an eight brick tall column. Go back to the first of these columns and place three more blocks moving forward from the top brick. Make another column on the corner. 
eight more blocks moving left from the top, then another column on the next corner. Add three more blocks backward from the top. In the next space, make an eight brick tall column and connect the top to the other eight brick column. Place seven smooth quartz slabs between the top half of the fourth bricks between the two eight brick columns. Then fill the space above it with black panes, like so. Behind the fourth and fifth brick of the outer eight brick column, place seven bricks moving backward, then make another eight brick column. Make two more eight brick columns immediately to the right to make a wall. Before we continue, add four more black concrete blocks to every black column, except the center rear outer column, where you'll add three black concrete blocks and one smooth quartz block. Connect the tops of all the outer columns with black concrete, except to the rear center column, where you'll use smooth quartz blocks to connect it with the black concrete columns to the left and right. Then return to the gray concrete wall on Wacker. Add a line of four gray concrete blocks to the right of the eighth block of the wall, then add another immediately below it. Then one more from the right of the fourth block on the wall. Now add gray concrete blocks right beside the black concrete columns, under the horizontal black rows, like this. Take your light gray glass panes and fill in the space between the gray concrete wall and the black concrete. Take your black glass panes and fill in the space between the upper, middle black columns. Equip your smooth quartz blocks and go to the outer gray column. Make a seven brick tall quartz column on the chiseled quartz, another to the right, then a six brick tall column to the right of that. Do the same on the other side of the Wacker gap. Take your smooth quartz slabs, put a slab on top of the outer quartz column, then make a row all the way across the gap. Line up your slab with the top half of the block on the next column and carry it over across the gap. Then place a slab on top of the six brick column and carry it over. From the right of the six brick columns, fill in the space between the columns and the black concrete and glass with light gray glass blocks to make a ceiling. Under the lower slab line, make a line of black glass panes across the gap, then three more below it. Place two panes vertically on either end, then two vertical rows of three in the center to make two entryways. Equip the gray concrete blocks. Make another eight brick column behind the seven brick quartz, then two more to the right. Repeat the earlier process, making two horizontal rows to the black concrete, another row from the fourth brick, then placing three blocks next to the black concrete and filling the space there with light gray glass panes, like this. Head to the back of the fourth brick on the outermost column and make a gray concrete line all the way back to the corner of Wacker and Jackson, a total of 22 more bricks. Count forward on the chiseled line by four spaces and make a column to the concrete above, then place four more blocks vertically to make the column eight blocks tall. Make a horizontal row of concrete from the front of the eighth block until it meets the top of the outer column of the Wacker entrance, 18 more blocks. Then go back to the Wacker Jackson column. From the right of the fourth brick, make a horizontal row of 14 smooth quartz slabs. Count left along the top of the slabs by five spaces and make a three brick tall gray concrete column. Place five pieces of light gray concrete to the left of that, then make another three block regular gray column left of that. From the second brick of these two new columns, place three more gray blocks moving forward, connecting to the outer row of concrete. Make a row of five more gray blocks along the inside of the outer row, then make three rows of light gray concrete inside of that. Place a single horizontal row of black glass panes between the inner two regular gray columns. From the top right of the Wacker Jackson column, place 14 regular gray concrete blocks to the right. Fill the space in to the left and right of the center two columns with black glass panes. Then equip your smooth quartz slabs. Place three slabs backward from the quartz below each of the middle two concrete columns, here and here. Place black panes on top of the new quartz rows, then fill the open space to the left and right of this center structure with smooth stone slabs to make little roofs, like this. Place black panes in the skinny opening on the left side of the Jackson entrance, then in the same opening on the right side. From the concrete below the inner column, right here, place nine smooth quartz slabs to the right, then 12 more moving forward, stopping just to the right of the black concrete. Place four gray concrete blocks on top of the last slab, right up against the black blocks. Place 11 more gray blocks moving back from the top of that column, then make another four brick tall gray column on the corner of the quartz. Then place eight more gray blocks to the left of that. Fill in the new spaces with black panes, like so. Head to the Jackson entrance and equip your light gray glass panes. From under the concrete, place four rows of glass going down. Place a row of smooth quartz slabs across the front of the lower half of the last row of glass. Then place three light gray panes vertically from the floor on the left and right, then three rows of three panes in the middle. 
Now fill in all the vertical open spaces on the outside of the base with black glass panes, making sure to fill in the upper spaces between the black concrete on the Franklin and Adams sides. Once done, head to the inside of the Wacker Jackson corner and re-equip your gray concrete blocks. Move in diagonally by two spaces from the corner column and make a three brick tall gray column, topping it with a smooth stone slab. Count six spaces forward and make a seven brick tall column, topped with a stone slab. Count seven more spaces ahead and make an identical column, then six more spaces ahead and make another, like this. Move to the rear left black column. Behind the fourth block up, make a line of 11 smooth quartz blocks. The next space back, from the chiseled block, make a three block column of smooth quartz with a slab on top, like this. Place five more slabs to the right, then three quartz blocks below the fifth to make a column. Fill the space between these two quartz columns and the black concrete up ahead with black panes, like so. Take your quartz slabs, count four spaces up from the floor, and fill in the floor between the Wacker entrance and the left side of the Jackson entrance, like so. Base where the left gray line meets the black concrete. From behind the top black concrete block, build out eight smooth quartz blocks, then place three smooth stone blocks to meet the outer edge. Place eight more smooth quartz blocks to the right of the last quartz block, Put three smooth stone blocks behind the last quartz block and seven more quartz ahead of it to connect it with the black concrete. Take your black panes and fill in the space between the left and right gray concrete lines and the lines of quartz and stone above them. Then the two empty spaces in the center of the black concrete outline. Look at the quartz floor next to the left glass window. Move to the back right corner and count forward, then left by one space. Make a three block column of gray concrete with a smooth stone slab on top. Count forward five more spaces and make another. Fill in the roof here with smooth stone slabs. Find the bottom left black concrete block and place a gray concrete block on the smooth stone roof behind it. Place two more to the left, five more backward, seven more to the right, five more forward, then four more to the left. Add another layer of gray concrete on top of this, then fill in the space inside with more concrete. Cover the entire top of this rectangle with green carpet pieces, like so. Equip light gray glass blocks and place a single row inside the quartz square. Place an additional glass block inside each corner. See the shape of the empty area inside the glass? A 3x3 three three square with an extra three spaces on each edge. You're going to cover it by making the exact same shape out of glass, but one layer above it. Place a block on a glass corner to build from, make the shape, then destroy that additional block you started with. Fill in the roof behind the quartz square with smooth stone slabs. Then head to the inside corner of Jackson and Franklin. Count up and left by one space and make a three block gray concrete column with a smooth stone slab on top. Seven more spaces forward and another. Six spaces and one final column. Fill in the entirety of the outer space here with smooth stone slabs, like so. Head inside to the rear right black concrete column. From the back of the fourth block, place 11 smooth quartz blocks. Place a quartz slab behind that, then three more quartz blocks below that to make a column. Place five slabs to the left of the top of the column, then three more blocks below that last slab to make a column. Fill in the space between the quartz and black concrete up ahead with black glass panes like we did on the other side of the building. Fill in the remainder of the first floor here with quartz slabs, like so. From both of the rear corners of this little area, count forward and inward by one space and make a three brick tall gray concrete column, topped with a smooth stone slab. Count forward by five spaces from both and make two more, before filling in the rest of the roof here with smooth stone slabs. Head to the inside corner of Adams and Franklin, count back by one and left by three making a three brick tall gray column with a smooth stone slab on top. Then fill in the roof of this area with stone slabs. Head inside the Wacker Adams corner, count back by one and right by three. Make another three brick gray column with a stone slab before filling in the little roof with stone slabs, like this. Head inside, count four spaces back from that column, then two spaces right to make a seven brick gray column with a stone slab on top. Count four spaces back to the left and make an identical column then four more spaces backward to make another. From the ground, count four blocks up along the wall and fill in the little area here with smooth quartz slabs to make the first floor, like this. Fill in the space up top with smooth stone slabs. Structurally, we're finished with the base, but there's still a little bit more. Equip your green carpet pieces and head to the lower portion of the Wacker Jackson corner, here, 
and place a carpet piece. Place three along the concrete ahead of it, and three more to the right of it, then another row on the inside of that, leaving two empty rows of three in front of the window. Head to the other little roof just left of the Jackson entrance. Place a carpet piece on the corner, three in front, three to the left, and another row inside to the left. Now go to the skinny window to the right of the Jackson entrance. Place a carpet piece on the lower slab to the right, three more below it to the corner, then 12 more pieces to the right to the next corner. Make another row of 12 just inside, like this. From the last piece, move forward by one space and place five going left, another five piece line immediately ahead of that. From the edge piece, place 19 more going forward, place another to the left and 18 pieces moving back. Head back to the front of this line and place one more to the left, then seven going back. One more left, seven more forward, then one final piece to the left. Ignore the quartz roof of the Franklin entrance. Place a carpet piece on the left gray concrete block in front of the quartz, count forward by seven spaces, then place another piece. Place a piece to the right, then seven more pieces moving back. Cover the rest of the Adams Franklin roof with green carpet, leaving the spaces in front of the window empty. Head to the lower roof at Wagner and Adams. Place 10 carpet pieces on the front gray concrete, then two more rows of 10 behind that. A row of two in the back right, then one more, like so, then one final piece on the back left gray block, leaving an empty line of smooth stone in front of the window. Move to the front right corner of the upper roof at Wacker and Adams. Place a carpet piece. Place eight more moving left to the next corner, then another behind. Count two spaces right and place another, then place three more to the right. Place four more moving back, one more to the left, then three more moving forward. One to the left, two more moving back. Move left by one space, then up, and place two more moving forward. Move two spaces left, back to the edge, and place another. Place six more moving back, then six more moving right. Move up by one, then left, and place five moving left. Place three more moving forward. Move right by one space, then back, and place two more going backwards. Finish this roof with one more piece to the right. Now head to the line of gray concrete behind the Wacker entrance. Starting from the right gray block, place seven carpet pieces moving left, then one behind. Move right by two spaces, place four pieces to the right, then move back and place four pieces to the left. Move left by two and place two moving back. Right by two and four to the right. Move back, place three to the left. Skip a space and place two more to the left. Move back, place three to the right, Skip a space, then place two more to the right. Move back, count two spaces left, then place four more pieces to the edge. Move back, place three more pieces to the right, skip a space, then put down two more pieces. Go to the next gray block on the edge and place 12 pieces moving back to the corner. Move right and place seven more moving forward. Count ahead by five spaces and place another piece. Move to the right, then back by one space and place four more pieces moving backward. Count back three spaces and place five more. Move right, place four going forward. Skip a space, place seven more going forward. Move right, place eight moving backward. Skip a space, then place three more. Place 10 more pieces to the right along the edge. Move forward, then put down four more to the left. Count five spaces to the left, then place two more. Move forward, move right by two more, then place four to the right. Count right by four spaces, then up by two more spaces, and place five carpet pieces moving forward. Move up by two, left by one, and place a single piece. Move back by seven, and place nine pieces to the left. Move forward and place eight pieces to the right. Forward and eight more to the left. Add two lines of nine pieces behind the court square. Move back two spaces and make three more, leaving a nine space strip of empty stone between these and the others, like so. Head to the upper right corner of the upper roof of Franklin. Place a line of 13 carpet pieces moving backward, then 8 more moving left. Move forward and place 6 more to the right. Skip a space, then place 1 more. Move forward by 5 spaces and put down 6 more going forward. Move left and place 3 going back. Move 4 spaces back and place 4 more. Put down 5 more to the left. Move forward, then 5 more to the right. Place 5 more going forward. Count 3 spaces and place 1 more. Move left, then back, and place two moving backward. Move back by three, and place three more. Put another to the left, move up by three, then place four more. Move left, and place six going backwards. Move back, then left by two, place five moving forward. Move right and up, then place two more going forward. And that's it!
Admire your work so far. This is the most complicated part of the build. Next up, we're going to start working on the tower. All right, let's get to working on the tower. Now equip your smooth quartz stairs and head to the four center black concrete columns. Face the back of the rear black pane row, right on the chiseled brick line. Count back two spaces from the glass, then right by two more spaces, just left of the next chiseled quartz blocks. Facing left, place one stair block, then another behind it. Place an upended stair piece on the back of each of these, then another on top of these, right side up. Place two more behind, two more on top, behind, then on top a final time. Behind these, place upended polished blackstone brick stairs. Equip your polished blackstone brick slabs and fill in the floor here. Make sure you're lined up with the top half of the fourth brick up the walls, and that you leave enough space in the floor to walk up and down your staircases, and that you leave the space inside the four center columns open like it is below. Place black glass panes on the floor between the inner four columns, like this. Equip the polished blackstone brick stairs and head to the upper middle black column. Count back three spaces from the column, then two spaces to the left. Place a blackstone stair piece facing right, then another just below it. Place upended stairs on their backs, regular ones on top, upended behind, regular on top, behind, top, and one more set behind. Now fill in the floor with the blackstone slabs like we did below. Add a black concrete block to the top of the four inner black columns so you can place your glass panes between them. Now add another concrete block to the middle columns the ones between the four center and the outer columns. From the back left corner, move right by four spaces, forward by two, and place a concrete block. Move right by eight and place another. Eight spaces to the right, and place a final block. Now, we'll add another brick to the outer columns. Now add 41 blocks to every outer column. Once done, connect the tops with horizontal rows of seven black blocks. Then fill in these exterior walls with black glass panes. Back down, equip your blackstone slabs. On the top half of the third brick here, make a row of slabs all the way around the interior. Keep making rows on the top half of every third space going up until you reach the top row of concrete. You'll wind up making 14 rows in total. Now raise each exterior column by another 5 blocks, and connect the tops with horizontal rows. Then fill in the spaces with black panes. Equip your blocks of coal and make a row on the upper blackstone slab row, all around the interior. Add 4 more rows of coal on top of this. Like so. Now, go back down and raise every other interior column by 46 more black concrete blocks. Equip your black stone stairs and head back down. Count forward three spaces from the rear middle column, then a space to the right. Facing left, place two stair pieces moving forward. Upended stair pieces behind, regular on top, upended, regular, and upended. Use your black stone brick slabs to fill in the remainder of the floor leaving the middle square open and placing rows of black panes on the floor between the four center columns. Once this floor is done, move up to the front middle column, count back three spaces, and left by one, then make a staircase headed up to the right. Then fill in the floor like we did below. You'll repeat this process of making a staircase on alternating sides, front to back, and filling in the floor 12 more times until you reach the coal level. Head to the rear middle column, count forward by three spaces and right by two more, Make a staircase facing left and stop when it's level with the rest of the structure. Then fill in the floor with your blackstone slabs. Equip your black concrete blocks and add a block to every column so you can put your glass panes between the center four. Raise the 12 exterior columns and the four center columns by another 27 blocks. Now head to the front left corner column. Add a line of seven black blocks moving back from the top, then right from the column behind it. Add seven bricks moving forward from the next column, then seven more to the left of the next column to make a black concrete square, like this. Equip your polished andesite slabs, place a row around the inside of this little square roof, lined up with the lower half of the blocks. Add another row inside of that, then place another slab in each of the four corners here. Fill in the rest of the space with five blocks of coal, and top each with a heavy-weighted pressure plate. Now head to the back right corner column and make an identical roof, just like this. Now raise all the glass on the exterior to match the height. Everything should be flush at the top. Then mark where your floors are going to be with your polished blackstone slabs, even under the little roofs. You'll wind up marking a total of nine floors. Raise the remaining interior columns to be level with the rest of the structure. Those in the front left and back right will end right underneath the little roofs. Now go back down and fill in your floors, alternating your staircases between the front and the back. 
placing glass between the center columns, except for the staircase leading from the 8th to the 9th of these new floors. On this floor, count three spaces to the right of the middle left column, then three spaces back, and build a staircase leading up to the 9th floor. The last floor will cover up the bottoms of the little roofs and cover the space between the center columns. Raise the exterior columns by 23 concrete blocks. Don't raise the outside corners of the little roofs, instead raising the inner corners, like this. From the top right of the rear left column, place 7 black blocks to the next column, then 7 more to the right of that column. 7 more moving forward, then right, forward, forward, left, left, back, left, back, and back. Now fill in the exterior spaces with black glass panes and mark your floors with blackstone slabs like we've been doing. You'll wind up building 8 rows of slabs. Raise the exterior columns by 5 more bricks. Go back down and raise the other 2 center columns by 28 blocks so they're level with the exterior. We're going to make 2 more little roofs on the back left and front right corners. Go to the back left column and place 7 more concrete bricks to the right, 7 more ahead, 7 more to the left, then 7 more back to the original corner. Make a row of andesite slabs around the lower inside of this square, then another, like so, another slab in each of the corners, five blocks of coal in the empty space, topped with five heavy pressure plates. Now follow the same process in the front right corner of the building. Go ahead and connect the tops of the rest of the exterior columns with rows of seven concrete blocks to match the outline below. Now fill in the exterior gaps with glass. Place a row of coal on top of the blackstone slab marking the floor. Keep placing rows of coal on top of this until you're flush with the exterior concrete or right under the andesite of the little roofs. Now head back down to the little block of the middle left column here. Count three spaces to the right, then two spaces forward, and place another black concrete block. Count five spaces right from this, then five more spaces forward, and place another. Head to the little block of the right middle column, here, and count left by three spaces, back by two, and place another concrete block. Five spaces left, five spaces back, and another. Now raise these new blocks and the other interior columns by 28 blocks to match the height of the rest of the build. Several of them will be 27 blocks tall as they end underneath the little roofs. Go back down and face the back of the front left center column. From the floor piece immediately behind it, count four spaces right and place a blackstone stair piece facing right, then another right behind it. Build up a staircase from this up to where the next floor will be. Go ahead and fill up the next floor, like so. Then face the floor piece immediately in front of the back right center column. Count four spaces to the left, place a stair piece facing left, then another in front of it, and make another staircase. Then fill in the next floor. Continue this process for the next six floors until you reach the coal floor. Once you fill in the coal floor, start a new staircase right up against the coal wall behind the front left center column, heading up to the right until it's level with the rest of the build. Then fill in the floor with blackstone slabs. The next bit of the tower is shaped like a plus sign. Add a black concrete brick to the center four columns, the middle two exterior columns on each side, then the remaining columns of the interior. From the rear middle column, count forward by three, left by two, and place a black block. From the right middle column, count left by three, forward by two, and place one. From the front middle column, count back three, right two, and place another. Three to the right of the left middle column, back two, and place one final block. Now raise the exterior and four center columns by 41 additional concrete blocks. Connect the tops of these columns with seven block rows of concrete to make the plus sign shape. Now fill in the exterior walls with black glass panes and mark the walls with blackstone slabs for your floors, a total of 14 rows. Now go back down and raise the remaining interior columns by 41 blocks so they're flush with everything else. Now go down and start building up the floors. Once you finish off the top floor, add another five black concrete blocks to the center four and eight exterior columns, like so. We're going to make three little roofs on the front, right, and rear sides of this plus sign. Connect the tops of the columns with seven brick concrete rows like we did below. It'll look like this, with a square space in the front, the right, and the back. Fill in these three squares with andesite slabs completely, aligned with the lower half of the concrete. Now fill in the exterior spaces with glass, like this. Then head inside with your blocks of coal. Make a four space tall wall of coal behind the frontmost window, the rightmost window, and the rearmost window. Then a five space tall wall inside the leftmost window. But don't place coal in the windows between them. Take your black concrete and raise the front three interior columns, the right three, and the rear three by four more blocks to meet the andesite. Then raise the left three columns by five. 
From the rear of the three left columns, count right by six and forward by one. Place a single stair block facing left and build it up to be flush with the top of our structure so far. Then fill in the floor with blackstone slabs. Add another concrete block to the four center columns, the left two exterior columns, and the three interior columns. Count two spaces back from the front center column, right by three spaces, and place another black block. Two spaces back, three spaces right, and place another. Three spaces left, two spaces back, and place a final block. Raise the exterior columns by another 29 blocks. Connect the tops with seven brick rows to shape the exterior, then fill in the gaps with black panes. Mark your floors with blackstone slabs for a total of 10 more rows. Raise the six interior columns by 29 blocks so they're flush with the exterior, like so, then go back down. From the front of the three left interior columns, count back one space and to the right by two spaces. Put a stair block facing right and build a staircase up to the next floor level. Fill in the floor. From the rearmost of the three right interior columns, count forward by one and left by two, then make another staircase headed left, like this. Fill in the floor and keep building your alternating staircases until you get to the ninth floor. Raise yourself up without building another staircase and fill in the tenth row with slabs. Place three more concrete blocks on top of each exterior column, connect the tops with rows of seven blocks, fill in the gaps with black glass panes, then place three rows of coal, vertically, along the inside of the walls. Then fill in the remaining empty space on top here with coal. Raise the exterior columns by a final two black blocks and connect the tops with rows of seven. Fill in the skinny gaps with glass. Okay, that's it for the tower. Look at that, beautiful. Let's take a quick break and come back to build the spire. Equip your beacons and replace the four top concrete corners. Like this. Equip your powered rails and make lines across the top of the concrete edges. Now take your andesite slabs and line up with the lower half of the concrete edges. Make a row all the way around. Face the front left corner of the andesite. Place three slabs moving right, then seven coal blocks, then three more andesite slabs into the next corner. Place another andesite slab moving backward, an end stone brick block to the left, a block of coal to the left of that, an end stone block behind that, two more end stone blocks to the right, place an andesite slab behind that, an end stone block to the left, and a block of coal left of that. Place an andesite slab in the back right corner, two more to the left, and then seven blocks of coal going left. Then three more andesite slabs. One more slab ahead, end stone right, coal right, end stone forward, two end stone left, slab forward, end stone right, coal right. Now raise the coal and endstone by two more layers, like this, then fill in the empty rectangular space in the middle with andesite slabs. Plop a beacon dead center on the andesite, an anvil both in front of and behind it, facing it from the side so the anvil lines up north to south. Place two scaffolding pieces to the left and right of both anvils and the beacon, you'll have two groups of six, like this. Then another anvil in the middle to the right and left, lined up normally. Now put down powered rails across the front and back rows of coal. On the four exposed pieces of coal, place a redstone torch. On the side of the coal below the redstone torch, place a grindstone facing outward. Do the same on the front of the building. Place a soul torch on the endstone next to that, a redstone torch on the endstone outside of that, then another soul torch on the face of the endstone facing out to the left or the right. Now it's time to build up the two spires. Raise the right group of endstone by five more blocks. Face the inside of the spire and count up by two spaces above each of the redstone torches on the coal and place a grindstone facing inward. Equip your endstone wall pieces, face the top outer brick of the spire and place a wall piece on either side, then a soul torch on top of each. Place another wall piece both forward and backward from these, then another to the right. Go down and face the back right beacon. Count up the andesite roof by two spaces and make a vertical column of wall pieces. You'll meet the end stone wall right above it, and then keep building until it reaches a total height of 14 pieces. Then place a soul torch on top. Face the front right beacon, count back two spaces on the andesite, and make another 14 piece tall column with a redstone torch on top. In the center of the spire, place two more blocks vertically. Replace the bottom block with a beacon. Then place stair pieces on all four sides to cover it up. Add nine more end stone blocks on top of the middle, then six wall pieces on top of that. Finally, add three birch fence pieces on top of that and a single end rod. 
Now, go back down to the left spire. Build up the end stone by five more blocks, face the top left section facing outside, place an end stone wall on either side, topped with a soul torch, then another wall piece in front and back, then another to the left of the original. Two spaces forward on the endosite roof from the back left corner, make a 14 block column of wall pieces with a redstone torch on top. Two spaces back from the front left corner, make another column with a soul torch on top. Two end stone blocks in the center of the spire, replace the first with a beacon, then cover each side with a stair piece. Add five end stone brick blocks on top of the center, six end stone wall pieces, eight birch fence pieces, and a single end rod. And there it is, everybody, the Willis Tower, Chicago's most famous skyscraper with new lobby in Minecraft, no mods, no texture packs or programs required. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope this tutorial helped, that it was easy to follow and that you had some fun along the way. These tutorials are a lot of fun to make, but they do require a lot of work to finish. If you'd like to support the channel, please drop a comment down below, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe with notifications turned on, and consider joining as a member for less than $2 a month. You can also follow the links down below to find our Discord server, subreddit, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as the website used for some of the stock footage at the beginning of the video. I really appreciate you guys stopping by today. Hope you had fun. I'll see you next time.